Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in today's video I'll be showing you how to implement a dark mode for your web pages. Okay, so um, this right here is the finished product. Now, the actual content doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to assume you have your own content or even if you don't, you should still be able to follow along with this tutorial. But this content right here is purely for demonstration purposes. Okay, so in the top right corner, I've got this theme selector. So of course, I've got automatic light and dark. So for the automatic mode, that is going to use the operating system theme. Okay, so if I go inside my Windows settings, I can actually choose um, a dark mode for my apps. Okay, so if I make it dark and then go back inside here, we can see now it is automatically switched to a dark theme. Okay, so that is the automatic mode. Now, of course, it's going to be more relevant on mobile devices as uh, most people tend to use dark mode on their phones compared to um, their desktops. Okay, so that is automatic. Now, for the lights, it's quite self explanatory. It's going to go to a light theme, and same goes for the dark. Now, I might just switch back my theme here to light. Okay, and Back inside here, this will actually, uh, you know, stay on refresh. So if I refresh the page here, we can see it remembers my theme selection. If I make it light and refresh again, it's going to remember what I chose previously. So that is also a feature of this solution. So let's go inside this tab right here and begin to create that, uh, that solution. Okay, so I'm using the exact same uh, website, okay, so inside the uh, text editor, it looks like this currently. So like I said, this content isn't actually relevant, but what is important is this right here. So we have this select drop down for the selected theme. Make sure you have this right here on your page. Um, if you don't, I'm going to leave all of this code in the description below for you to download. Um, but just make sure you actually have a select drop down just like this um, with an ID. Uh, for example, cell theme. Okay. Also, for each option, make sure you have an automatic, of course, light and dark. But more importantly, make sure you have auto, light and dark inside the value attributes of your options. Okay, so once you have that, we can move on to the main.css file right here. So the important part for this to work is going to be the usage of CSS variables. As you can see here, I've used uh, a couple of CSS variables. Um, essentially, if you don't know if, if you don't know what these are, um, they allow you to assign names to your values and then you can actually reuse those values throughout the entire style sheet. So right here, for example, I'm saying the background color is going to be triple F or white. Okay. Um, and that is for the default light theme. Okay. Now in my document, as we can see down here, I'm using the variable var background color. This right here doesn't actually do anything visually. It simply assigns a variable then I'm using it down here. Same goes for text color. Okay, so triple three, I'm using it right here. And I'm also using it somewhere down here. So on the actual select input itself. Like I said, all of these styles aren't relevant. Okay, but what is important is the usage of these variables. So essentially, um, the way it's going to work is we're going to be reassigning or changing the value of these variables as we switch between dark or light mode. Okay, so with that being said, let's redefine these variables with a dark variation. So up here, we can target colon root, and we can simply just put um, a dark version of each of these CSS variables. So we can do this, and we can just prefix each one of these with dark. So dark dash. Then we can say uh, inside here, we can choose our dark mode color. So I'm going to say triple one for the background color. Uh, triple two for the alternative background color and trim color is going to be triple three and triple E for the text color. Okay, so now with these values, we can simply go inside uh, or go down here and we can declare a new rule set. So we're going to be saying body dot theme dash dark. So essentially, when the body element has a class of theme dash dark, we're going to be applying the above variables. So we can just copy and paste this now. Okay, 
Then inside here, we can simply make use of our previously defined dark mode variable. So for example, dark background color is gonna map to background color right there. And now of course, every future use of this variable is gonna refer to this one and not this one up here. It's gonna be overwritten. Okay, so let's do the exact same thing. I'm gonna be saying here var pass through uh, dark background color alt and do the exact same thing for the trim color. That'll be trim color just like that. And the same thing below, of course, for the text color. So now, upon saving this and refreshing, uh, nothing happens, okay? But if I go back inside here and I set the theme-class, sorry, the theme-dark class to the body, save this and refresh, it now goes to this right here. Now, I must have had a typo, so let's go back and figure it out. Um, so here, this needs to be, where is it? This, these need to be dark. So dark dash trim and dark dash text color. Let's try again and refresh and now we have this right here. So that is how the solution is going to work. We've covered the light mode. So the light mode is default. There is no extra class for this. Uh, we've covered dark mode. Now to cover the automatic mode. So to achieve this, we're gonna be using a media query. We're gonna be saying media, then prefers color scheme then dark. So this right here um, basically detects whether or not your operating system has dark mode enabled. Okay, if it does, we can say body.theme-auto and inside here, uh, we can simply just copy and paste all of this and inside here. So now we're saying when the operating system likes or wants a dark theme and the theme-auto class is assigned to the body, we're gonna be applying these styles. Of course, it's a copy and paste of this right here. Now, you might be able to get around uh, the code duplication using a CSS preprocessor, but the fact that we've actually defined them up here uh, at this single point is probably the best we can do without a CSS preprocessor. So anyway, um, these two conditions right here, uh, let's satisfy them. So let's go back inside the index HTML, make this theme auto, and set my OS to be uh, at mode dark. Okay, so now I'll refresh the page and everything is working, okay. Um, I believe previously it might've been on dark mode, um, but as you can see um, with, the, uh, with the body class of theme auto, if I remove this now, it goes to light mode. So by having this class of theme auto, we're able to now detect or we're able to use the operating system theme color instead of our defaults or the actual dark theme. So now if I go back inside here and I make this light, it's going to switch to the light mode right there. So now it's gonna be all about making this dropdown work. So let's go to the JavaScript. So uh, back inside here, let's remove this class, okay? And for the JavaScript, uh, we're gonna be first defining a function which will of course set the actual theme. So we can say function, call this, uh, call this function apply theme. This will take in here our theme. So theme is gonna to refer to either auto, light, or dark. So basically one of these three values right here in lowercase. Okay, so with that being said, we can then say document.body.classList.remove. We're gonna be removing a few classes. We're gonna say theme-auto, theme-lights, and of course, theme-dark. So this right here is gonna remove any existing themes that are set against the body. And then we can say document.body.classList.add, and we can add our theme right here. We're gonna be using theme dash then pass through theme just like that using the ES6 template strings, these two back ticks right here. So now we're gonna get one of these uh, one of these three possible themes set against the body. So now saving this and refreshing, going inside the console, we can call the apply theme method, pass through for example dark, it's gonna add the theme dark uh, class to the body and we can see it's working perfectly fine. So now it's gonna be about getting this drop down to work. So back inside here, uh, we're gonna be saying document.addEventListener. We're gonna listen for the DOM contents loaded event. And inside here, 
Uh, this basically means once we can actually start interacting with the DOM, uh, we can say, uh, we can do document.querySelector. We're going to select this uh, the selected theme uh, select element. So of course, this refers to uh, this one right here. We're going to say when at event listener, when the value gets changed, we're going to run this function right here. So this function is going to simply say apply theme. It's going to pass through uh, this dot value. So this dot value, so this refers to the actual element itself. Saying dot value refers to the selected option auto, light or dark, these ones inside here. So now saving this and refreshing, we should be able to now use this drop down. Let's do light mode, or sorry, dark mode. It's working. Let's do auto and change my settings to dark. We can see it is working. So everything is working perfectly fine. So the very last step here is going to be uh, remembering our previous theme selection on refresh. So to achieve this, we need to go back inside here and we need to basically say inside this apply theme uh, or this uh, function right here, we can simply say local storage. So we're going to be using local storage to achieve this. We're going to say local storage dot sets item. We're going to set the theme, uh, the uh, the uh, theme key there. Okay, so we're going to set the theme to be this dot value. So now it's going to be saved through refreshes. Um, and also local storage is going to that's going to work per origin. So basically, this will be saved against your actual website locally. On the user's machine. Okay, um, so now it's going to be simply about getting this value on page load. So let's go up here. I'm going to say const saved theme. You know what? I might actually show you what it uh, what it looks like first. So let's go back inside here, refresh. Let's select an option, for example, lights. Then call local storage dot gets item. Let's get the theme. So I can say get item and pass through here theme. Press this and I get light. If I make this dark we now get dark right there. So we need to read this value on page load. Let's go back inside here. We're going to be saying const saved theme uh, equal to local storage dot get item pass through here theme or auto. So auto is going to be our default. We can then say apply theme and pass through here saved theme. That way on page load is uh, it is going to apply our saved theme. Okay. Then lastly, we can just say for const option element, okay, of document.querySelector, we're going to be selecting each one of our options inside the select drop down menu. We're going to be saying cell theme, then option, okay. This needs to be document.querySelector all, okay. Once inside here, we're going to select or we're going to set one of those drop down items as the actual default selected item. So. Uh, we can simply say option element dot selected is equal to uh, right here. So selected is equal to saved theme equals option element dot value. So basically, it's going to loop through each one of our options. It's going to say, okay, is this option value of auto the same as what we selected in the saved theme? If it is, then of course, it's going to select that option. Uh, same goes for light. It's going to go here. It's going to say yes. I save the light theme, so let's make this the default selected option. Let's now save this and refresh, and we can see now it has gone to dark. Let's make this light and refresh again, and we can see it is saving our previously selected theme. And that right there is how to create a theme selector uh, using HTML, CSS, and a tiny bit of JavaScript. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.